and welcome back. And we're going to use Maple to see if we can actually solve a cubic equation. Now, you're going to be doing this with paper and pencil at home, so I'm doing this just so it can be quick and show you exactly what's going to take place. So let's start with a cubic equation. And I just happen to have one that I have uh, been working with. And the expression is going to be P is equal to X cubed plus 9 times X squared plus 31 times X plus 23. And so there's my expression. And I do want to get a function for this. So I'm going to let F be uh, assign the value of unapply. And you'll remember from the previous video, this is how I can turn it into a function that lets me basically substitute values into it. So F is now something I can substitute into. And what do I want to substitute into F? Well, I want to look at a new expression. I'm going to call it Q for the time being. And Q is going to be equal to F where we're replacing and we're saying that x is equal to y minus, and in this case it is 9 divided by 3, because we're wanting to suppress the square value. And so now I'm going to say q is equal to the expansion of q. And did not, oh, I forgot to put the colon right here. Now it'll do that for me. And there we go. And now what you see is that we have our suppressed form. And we have y cubed plus py equals q, where we have p and q are those little values that we solved for when we did the derivation of the solution of the cubic equation. So P for me is now going to become a number. P is going to be equal to 4. And I'm going to have Q is now going to be assigned a value of 16. Because remember, I'm moving it to the other side of the equal sign. So with that being the case, I can now go back to those equations I solved and type them in. And if you remember, we had A cubed. So I'm going to type in a cubed is going to be equal to, and we're going to write that down. And I have my book here with me, so I'm going to look in my book, and I see that a cubed is going to be equal to q divided by 2 plus the square root of q squared divided by 4. And to that, we're adding P cubed divided by 27. And we're going to close our parentheses. Now, what's really nice about Maple is it does the substitutions. So I can see what A cubed is. It's actually a number. Not a pleasant looking number necessarily, but it's a number that I can use. And then we're going to have B cubed. And b cubed is the same thing as a cubed, except it has a negative in front of the first term. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy by doing control C and drop it down here doing control V. But before I go too far, I've got to remember to put the negative sign in. And when I hit enter, I get b cubed. Now, what we're claiming is the solution to this equation up here is found by taking a minus b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write y val. And what I'm saying is the y value that's going to solve this y equation up above is going to be equal to a cube. But we're going to raise that to the rational power of 1 divided by 3. And that's how I'm getting to the third root. And we're going to subtract from that b cubed. 
and we're going to raise it to the rational power of 1 divided by 3. All right, and we now have y value. And there's my y value, but that may not help us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to evaluate to floating point y val. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to get something that looks like a decimal to help me. And that number looks a lot like 2. As a matter of fact, in computer language, I would call this 2. Let's look up here where we have our cubic equation in terms of y. If y cubed, and if y is 2, y cubed would be 8. 4 times 2, well, that would be 8, and 8 and 8 would make 16. So when I take 16 from it, I get 0, which is what I'm after. But this isn't the answer to this problem up here. If you'll remember, this problem up here to solve f, I did a substitution. I said x is equal to y minus 3. So if you write that down, x equals y minus 3, y is equal to x plus 3. So what I need to do is do a substitution down here in order to see what's going on. My problem is my solution is too large. I need to get back in terms of the original variable x. Well, in order to do that, I need to subtract 3 off of this y value. So watch what I can do. Remember, f is still this function way up here. And we said this is about 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2, the y value, minus 3, because that was that shift over we did. And if I've done this problem right, 3 minus 2, which is negative 1, is going to give me a zero value because that's what we're trying to solve for. And lo and behold, we do get that. So when you are solving these problems, one with a calculator or going into the real number system, remember you may need to interpret what your computer is telling you. And because you have a solution for the y version of the equation, don't forget to go back and get the solution to the x version, or the original version, the one that had the unsuppressed. And we find that if you put negative 1 into this equation, you would get 0, which is what we're solving for, the zeros of these equations. I hope you found this illuminating.